if this one is so difficult for you to understand, you know, I just retired not too long from the oil industry in Nigeria, and I can give you some insight. First insight I can give you is that Nigeria does not have so much oil. Now, what I've said now is shaking you. You don't understand what I mean. I will explain. We don't have so much oil. Meanwhile, the oil that is there will be there till Jesus comes back home. But it's not so much. What we have so much is gas. With, compared to gas, we have little oil. The gas we have can heat Europe till Jesus comes back. Are you there? Meanwhile, some oil wells that are 30 years old are still running with the, the, the flow rate is still consistent since 1960-something. Meanwhile, the wells of Aberdeen in the United Kingdom are dry. Are, are you following? You are not following. Did you get that one? Are you aware that the poorest states in this country, inclusive of Kogi State, we don't even know if there's a state there. Well, you need the binoculars to check if there's something going on there. Those seemingly poor states are wealthier in terms of mineral resources. Kogi, it will interest you to know that Kogi State is highest on the table of valuable mineral resources. What I'm trying to draw your attention to, you're not following me. Now, I, I read the facts. I study the facts. I, I have statistics on my fingertips. The God that created Nigeria never intended that any citizen of this country would be poor. The resources to make every citizen rich came with the package. But we see that there's more poverty where God domiciled the greatest wealth. Can you explain that? Oh, okay, stay there. Let's, let's go back. I'm just, that's a puzzle for you to think about. That the fact that there are resources doesn't translate to people working in wealth because there's warfare around wealth. Go and find everywhere there is oil, there is unrest globally. Oh, you are not following. Oh, you are not following. Are you there? There is always warfare around resources. In the natural and in the supernatural. So the golden chicken, that is Nigeria, that lays golden eggs, the land is parched and dry. I worked in Gombe State for six years or thereabout, five years. If you are in the restaurant eating, you need to ensure that you, the, your frequency of eating is consistent with all the food finishes. So if you are going like, like this, be moving at that rhythm until there's no food left. Because if you stop and you do like this, our marjorie, you know what they call our marjorie? We, we, we assume that you have finished it. So don't drink water. Don't drink water. Just be going like, like this. <laughs> eh? Don't talk. Then when, they, when you have emptied the whole food, then you can rest and then take, ask for water. If the moment you, I bought one fish, one big fish. In fact, the eyes on that fish, I had to cast people out because the eyes, they were uh, I knew that the fish was not safe. That if I eat. The people around spoke in house and said, who is this man buying fish like this? You have not seen poverty. I saw it. You don't need a dictionary in Gombe State to, to know what poverty is. Poverty is personified on the street like this. Meanwhile, that's a land. That's a nation that was adequately provided for by the great monarch. 
But you see, warfare will not allow resources enter into your hand because Satan knows that if he gets there, you are likely to be charitable to the agenda of God. And he needs you immobilized completely. Kai. <laughs> oh my God. Doesn't that make you want to weep? Who did this to us, Nigeria? Gas is almost 12k now. Electricity tariff is soaring. Foodstuff is exorbitant. The poor are getting poorer. We still don't have good roads or good schools or good teachers. Yet, we have natural gas in the earth that can power Europe for centuries to come. Oil that will never dry up till Jesus comes. Nigeria, who did this to us? You know, the answer that comes to mind is the one from scripture. An enemy hath done this. And I'm referring to men, <laughs> Nigerians, our own country people, who partnered with Satan to ensure that the rest of us do not rise, that we remain subjugated, we remain in poverty and penury while they grab all the resources of this, this country for themselves. Thankfully, February 25 is almost here. So if you're a believer and if you're a Nigerian, please do not relent in your prayers concerning the elections. And to your prayers, add voting, add voting, even sensitization of you know, people in your community. Do not forget to vote. Sunday, I hear, is the last day to collect your PVC. Ensure you do it. Let's vote in a new Nigeria. One where resources will be maximized for all. Thank you and God bless you.